Hi, it's Virginia here with Prayer Communication with God. Thank you for joining us today. I pray that you'll be blessed by the message that comes to you. We're continuing our study in Leviticus um, in chapter 6, verses 1 through chapter 8, verse 36. When we look at the offerings here, the sacrifices, um, as they're called, we need to come to a deeper understanding. Um, and I have the privilege of being in a group on Facebook which studies Torah, and we learn from each other. We, we discuss the passages of Scripture, and we learn from each other. And I must say, um, a lot is learned when you can come together and, and do this discussion as, as we do. And I'm thankful for the Internet that I'm able to connect with people all over the world and, and learn in this way. Um, I'm not limited to right here in my surrounding area, but I can get a broader knowledge and can learn from people that are in the East and in the West and the North and the South, and it all comes together. When we look at um, an offering, look back at... Leviticus chapter 1 verse 2 for a moment we see when a man of you offers an offering and here um, the Hebrew word for offering is karban which is related to the word karev or to be near so translating this word as sacrifice is incorrect because a sacrifice implies that you're giving up something that is of value for the benefit of another or you're having to do without something of value. But what karban actually is, is like the opposite of sacrifice. Because it is, everywhere we see karban used in scripture, it is always associated with the holiest form of God's name. And so the purpose of karban, or the offering, was to bring Israel back to God. Um, and as I said yesterday, we are creatures of habit. And so by doing these offerings in place of the word sacrifice, by doing these offerings as often as they did, they're instilling this desire for God to be near them. They've given a free will offering of what they have in the creation of the Holy Space of the dwelling place of God among them, the tabernacle. And now they do this, these offerings to stay near to God, to be pleasing to God, to fulfill God's will in their lives. And so we have to ask ourselves today, how does this apply to us today? Since we don't still do the blood offerings, um, what do we offer God? What does our service look like? to him is it acceptable how do we treat ourselves how do we talk to ourselves if you're putting yourself down if you're constantly looking at what you think is a flaw and not loving on yourself not telling yourself how much you love yourself then how can we say that our offerings are are what God desires I believe what God desires is for us to choose to serve Him to the fullest extent that we can and even beyond. And one might say, how can we go beyond our own limitations? We have boundaries that we can't go across. It's like someone's drawn a line in the sand and says, you can't step over this line. But if we look back through Scripture, we see all throughout Scripture that all things are possible with God. If God calls you to a purpose, if He calls you to do something, He's going to provide the way for you to do it. It may take you across that imaginary line in the sand, get you outside of your comfort zone, but He will provide a way for you to do it. He just simply asks that we trust Him, trust Him with all of our fiber, with every cell of our being. He created us, and his desire is for us to choose him. It's all about choice. There's 613 commandments in the Old Testament. Um, not each of these commandments 
apply to each of us as individuals. Some are just for men, some are just for women, some are just for the priest, and some are there for all of us, um, the dietary laws and, and things as that. Now we learn in the New Testament that we don't have to keep the dietary laws. There are certain commandments we don't have to keep. And I really put emphasis on have to. Because, no, you don't have to do it in order to to get close with God. But if you choose to keep these laws, then it's going to draw you nearer to God. That's what these commandments are for. Just as these offerings in Leviticus were put in place to draw Israel closer to God, the commandments that we find that for most of our lives, we've been taught we don't have to keep. Um, that they're too hard to keep. They're not as hard as we think. It's a choice. We don't like change. But until we change our mindset, and until we step outside of that comfort zone, and we choose whichever choice we're going to make, we're not going to have that closeness with God. Each of these things here are here to draw us into a more intimate relationship with God. Think about your relationship with your spouse versus your relationship with your children. Both are intimate relationships, but the one with your spouse is a different kind of intimate relationship. It's, it's a closeness where two become as one. And this is the relationship that God desires to have with us. He wants us to become one with Him. Not by force. Not by being fearful of being sent to hell's fire. But because we love Him and because He loves us. He wants us to choose to love Him. To choose to keep His commandments. And to choose to be in that oneness with Him. So... I leave it to you. I don't try to persuade you. I don't try to convert you. Um, and I'm not going to point out any flaws. I'm not going to sit here and say, you should be doing this or you should not be doing that. I'm just simply going to tell you what God tells you. The choice is yours and yours alone to make. No one can make it for you. Not your mother, not your father, not your grandmother, not your children your pastor, none of the people in your congregation. This has to be an individual choice for you. If you so choose to keep these commandments, the ones that you don't have to keep, but the ones that are there for your choosing, then you will be blessed. I, I can't say any different from my own personal experience. Once I came to start studying and start learning about these commandments and make my own mind up and follow the leading of my heart to start honoring the Sabbath and keeping it holy, to start trying to go by the, the dietary laws. Um, once I started even considering, even before I put in the action to it, but once I just started considering keeping these commandments, I could see a change in my relationship with God. I didn't feel like there was this huge gaping valley in between two mountain peaks, but it was a, a bridging of the two mountains coming together. And, and it is this bridging it, that came about through choice a personal choice that I made, a personal choice that you can make. And I encourage you today to be mindful, to be thoughtful of the way you think, to be thoughtful of the actions that you take, because God's Word tells us, Jesus tells us, you can't serve two masters. You're going to love one or you're going to hate the other. And we have a spiritual self and we have a physical self. And they're a mirror image of one another. So whatever I'm doing here in the physical, 
I'm also doing in the spiritual. And the fruit will show. If if I'm being totally self-centered and only looking at myself and not being mindful of how I treat others, then the same's going to show in, in my spiritual life. There's going to be a, a great divide. But as I love myself, as I love God, and as I learn to love others the same way that I love myself and God, then that, that bridge is being built. And there's no longer the great separation. So I pray for you, for me, that we continue to seek to draw near to God. We desire that oneness with Him. Because that's what He desires with us. It's that oneness. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for this bounding of your word this morning. I pray that I have brought it across in a way that is easy to understand, in a way that it doesn't condemn, but it brings life. Father, it's not my desire to make someone feel bad about themselves, but to encourage them and to lift them up and to bring abundant life to them. I thank you for the opportunity that you give me to speak with all of these across the world through the internet. And I just thank you for the blessings that you've given us. I thank you that you desire a oneness with us. You desire an intimate husband-wife relationship with us. And I pray, Father, that you will place that desire in our heart so that we will also be humble and, and desire that with you that we can reciprocate between the two of us. Father, I ask you to help us to guard our words so that our words don't limit what you can do in our lives. Not necessarily just for us, because we don't want to treat you like a genie who's granting us three wishes, Lord, but we want to honor and respect you the way that subjects should honor and respect their king. You are the king. You are the Lord of our lives. And we want to, we want to bring you the blessings that you deserve, Father, for you are a gift to us. And I pray, Lord, that you just bless each one that listens to this message abundantly, that, that they live an abundant life through you, Father, and that they come into the oneness with you. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask these things. Amen. As always, thank you for being with us today. I pray that you'll continue to come back to be with us. And to I pray that you're blessed um, enormously through everything that you see here. I pray that you, you get that abundant life. We're, we're not created to just barely survive, but we're created to live an abundant life through God, with God in oneness with Him. And this is what I pray for you today. Um, for those of you that need a healing touch in your body, that your family members need a healing touch, I pray that God comes down and miraculously touches you, touches your family member, brings forth an abundant life in them. May you see His, his miracles today. May through our thoughts, through our words, and through our actions, we bring about these miracles. May mountains be moved. May peace, joy, and harmony fill us. God bless you.